The Create-A-Bed adjustable Murphy bed mechanism was designed for the do-it-yourselfer with basic woodworking skills and tools. This revolutionary Murphy bed mechanism features a patented lifting system that can be adjusted in seconds to raise and lower easily. It uses sleek, dependable gas springs instead of metal springs and was designed for years of daily use and comfortable sleep. This video is to be used in conjunction with your illustrated step-by-step -step construction booklet to construct a Murphy bed using the Create-A-Bed adjustable Murphy bed mechanism. Before you start this project, read the instruction booklet and review this video from start to finish. We are building a full or double size bed in this instructional video. If you see a difference between information in this video and your printed plans, always go by your printed plans as they are specific to the size bed you are building. This mechanism and these instructions were developed after years of engineering and field testing. The measurements and mounting positions of the mechanism combine with the recommended materials to create a Murphy bed that will raise and lower easily and provide years of trouble-free use. You can add decorative molding and trim to create the Murphy bed that suits your decor, but you should not substitute materials or deviate from these instructions without first calling Create-A-Bed LLC toll-free at this number. Advanced woodworkers and professionals can make some substitutions for the materials we specify in these instructions, but you should still call our technical assistance department first. Unpack your mechanism and check to see that all these parts are included. Two printed booklets, a cream color construction booklet you'll use to build your bed cabinet out of veneer or furniture grade plywood and some solid wood, and a white assembly and installation booklet that you will use to assemble and properly install your Murphy bed after you have constructed the cabinet components. Two black gas springs, two adjustable upper ball stud plates with two silver ball studs, two black ball stud spacers, four T-nuts, and four machine screws, two adjustable lower ball stud plates with four number 10 one and five eighths inch screws, four T-nuts, and four machine screws. Two pair of male female metal pivots with two plastic spacers, two E clips, four T nuts with machine screws, and 12 number 12 three quarter inch silver screws. Two metal pivoting legs, one left and one right, with two quarter inch by two and one half inch leg support rail screws four black number 10 three quarter inch screws, and four T-nuts with machine screws, two bed stops with two number 10 three quarter inch black screws, and two elastic mattress retaining straps. If any parts or components are missing, call this toll-free number. The tools you will need are a power drill and assorted drill bits as detailed in your construction booklet, a power saw, table saw, or circular saw, a jigsaw or coping saw, Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, or driver bits for a drill, a number four Allen wrench, a tape measure, a hammer, clamps, a straight edge or framing square, a household iron and utility knife, a 7 16 socket wrench or driver, and a 1 half inch wrench. We strongly recommend veneered, sometimes referred to as furniture grade, plywood for the construction of the bed cabinet because plywood is much stronger, lighter, and more durable than particle board. A bill of materials and cut sheet are included in your booklet. Refer to pages 4, 5, and 6 to calculate the amount of wood components and other construction materials you'll need to purchase. Page 6 also includes the recommended size and weight of the mattress you'll use on your Murphy bed. The Murphy bed cabinet you will be constructing consists of the following parts identified by letter here and in your construction booklet. Part A, the inner wood bed frame. 
Parts B, the two side rails. Part C, the foot rail. Part D, the head rail. Part E, the bed face panel. Part F, the bed headboard. Parts G, the two bed cabinet verticals. Part H, the bed header. Part I, the leg support rail. And part J, the quarter inch plywood mattress support. Using the safety precautions appropriate for the tools you're working with, cut the wooden pieces described on page six. To reduce waste, refer to the cutting guide on page five in your booklet. Please note that in this video, we are building a full-size horizontal Murphy bed using veneered plywood. If you are building a different size bed, your printed instruction booklet will differ from what you see in this video. Always go by your printed instruction booklet whenever you see a difference between what you see here in the video and what your booklet instructs you to do. We'll start with part A, the inner wood bed frame. Part A consists of the frame struts and the two frame sides. The length of your frame struts and their spacing will depend on the size of the bed you're building. Refer to your printed construction booklet for the specific dimensions for the size and style of bed you are building. Start with two frame strut pieces. Run a bead of wood glue along the three quarter inch wide edge of the first frame strut. Glue the narrow edge of the first frame strut to the bottom half of the second frame strut, checking to make sure that the ends are flush. Drill pilot holes approximately eight inches apart and nail with inch and a half finish nails or number eight inch and a half screws. Place the frame strut assemblies on a flat surface as shown. Note the orientation of the struts. Place the frame sides at the ends of the frame struts. Referring to the instruction booklet, space and mark the positions of the frame struts according to the dimensions required for the size bed you are building. Mount the frame struts between the frame sides. Using an eighth inch drill bit, countersink and drill pilot holes through the frame sides into each end of the L-shaped frame struts. Screw the number eight two inch wood screws flush. Please note that you must use plywood for the side rails parts B. Why? Because this is where the stress is on the frame. Plywood is much stronger than solid wood. Yes, even stronger than solid hardwood. If you choose not to use plywood for parts B, you will void the warranty on this mechanism and risk possible catastrophic damage to your Murphy bed. Don't do it. Determine which side rail will be on the left and which will be on the right side of the face panel. Place the good side of the side rails face down on your work surface with the top edges facing out. From the front of the right side rail, measure over three and one eighths inches and measure down two and one half inches from the top of the side rail. Repeat these steps on the left side rail. Drill a 5 8 inch diameter hole 1 half inch deep.
Using the templates on pages 10 and 12, use a jigsaw or coping saw to cut the curved radius on the right and left side rail. Sand the edges smooth. Place the leg pivot into the 5 8 inch hole on the right side rail. Position the pivot plate so that it is parallel to the top and bottom of the side rail. Using the bottom two holes as a guide, mark and drill two quarter inch holes completely through the side rail. To prevent damaging the outer side of the side rail, clamp a piece of scrap wood to the outside of the rail while drilling through it. Repeat on the left side rail. Insert two machine screws through the holes and screw them snugly into two T-nuts inserted from the outside of the side rail. Screw a black number 10 3 quarter inch screw through each of the top two holes in the plate. Repeat on the left side rail. Apply pre-glued veneer tape to the upper edges of the side rails. Measure a length of veneer tape 2 inches longer than the piece you are taping. With the glue side down, place the veneer tape on the edge to be taped and heat the tape with a hot iron. Apply pressure to the veneer tape with a small block of wood. Trim the ends and edges of the veneer tape flush with the surface. Special edge trimming tools are available that make this process easier. If you have not cut a piece of solid wood to create part I, the leg support rail, refer to the cutting list on page 6 for the specific length of the leg support rail for the size bed you are building. Draw two lines diagonally from each corner of the end of the leg support rail to find the center on both ends. Drill a 1 quarter inch wide by 1 and 1 half inch deep hole in both ends of the rail. 
you will wait to attach the leg support rail to the legs until after you have applied a finish to it when you are ready to assemble and install your Murphy bed. Refer to your construction booklet for the mounting positions of the lower ball stud plate and the female pivot plate. Position the side rails on a flat surface with the good sides up and the top edge banded edges facing each other. Pull the two template pages 15 and 16 out of the booklet and place the right side rail template above the top banded edge of the right side rail and the left rail template above the top banded edge of the left side rail. Starting with the left side rail, use the measurements on the template for placement of the 1 inch pivot hole. Mark and drill a one inch hole completely through the side rail. For a cleaner hole and to avoid damaging your work surface, place a scrap of wood under the side rail before drilling. Now measure and drill the one inch hole completely through the right side rail. Using the templates on pages 15 and 16 of the cream colored instruction booklet, orient the adjustable lower ball stud plates to the ends of the side rails. Note the position of the hex head and the end of bed labels differ between the left and right adjustable lower ball stud plates. Starting with the left adjustable lower ball stud plate, align the channel with the finished top edge of the left side rail and flush with the end of the side rail. Mark the position of the mounting holes closest to the hex head. Drill two one quarter inch diameter holes through the left side rail. Insert two T-nuts from the inside of the left side rail. Screw two machine screws through the adjustable lower ball stud plate into the T-nuts. Now align the channel of the right side adjustable lower ball stud plate with the finished top edge of the right side rail and flush with the end of the side rail. Mark the position of the mounting holes closest to the hex head. Drill two one quarter inch diameter holes through the right side rail. Insert two T-nuts from the inside of the right side rail. Screw two machine screws through the adjustable lower ball stud plate into the T-nuts. Flip the left and right side rails over. Mount the female pivot plate to the inside of the left side rail. Press the female pivot plate into the pivot hole.
screw the plate flush to the rail using the number 12 3 quarter inch silver screws provided in the kit. Now, mount the female pivot plate to the right side rail. Remove all the hardware and sand parts B. Clamp the foot rail part C to the inner wood bed frame, making sure the ends and bottom of the foot rail are flush with the inner wood bed frame. Drill two holes through the frame side into the side rails between each strut one and one quarter inches deep for a total of eight holes per rail. Drive the number eight one and one quarter inch wood screws flush. Repeat these steps to attach the head rail part D to the inner wood bed frame. Clamp the inside of the left side rail, edge banded edge up, to the side of the inner wood bed frame. Please note that the leg hole you drilled earlier should be facing the bed frame. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill 5 1 8 inch pilot holes 1 and 1 quarter inch deep through the inner wood bed frame into the side rail, part B.
drive the number eight one and one quarter inch wood screws flush, snugging the inner wood bed frame to the side rail. Now repeat these steps to attach the right side rail. Drill two 1 8 inch pilot holes, two inches deep, through each end of both the left and the right side rails into the foot rail. Drive two number eight 2 inch screws flush at the end of the foot rail. Reattach the adjustable lower ball stud plate to the right side rail using the two T-nuts and machine screws. Using the two holes in the adjustable lower ball stud plate closest to the end of the bed as a guide, drill two 1 8 inch pilot holes two inches deep through the side rail and into the head rail. Screw two number eight one and five eighths inch screws through the adjustable lower ball stud plate and into the end of the head rail. Next, drill one one eighths inch pilot hole two inches deep through the right side rail and into the head rail one inch from the bottom edge. Drive one number eight two inch screw flush. Repeat these steps on the left side rail. For the best results, examine both sides of the face panel pieces, parts E, to determine which sides will be the front or bottom of the finished face panel component. Apply wood veneer edge banding tape or melamine edge tape to the three outer edges of the bed face panel, parts E. Lay both face panels on a sturdy padded work surface so that the fronts are good side down and the unfinished edges are next to each other. On the back side, mark a quarter inch pencil line along the full length of each panel along the finished long edge.
With the bed face panels still lying face down, but the two unfinished inside edges together. Make sure the quarter inch pencil marks are visible on the outer finished edges. With a helper, align the sides of the bed frame with the quarter inch pencil marks and lay the assembled bed frame on top of the face panel pieces, making sure the foot rail part C of the assembled bed frame is flush with the finished edge banded edges of the bed face panels. The face panel must extend one quarter inch on both sides of the bed frame assembly. The bottom end of the face panel will extend one quarter inch past the bottom end of the bed frame. If your bed frame is not square at this point, you will be able to adjust it when you attach the face panels, parts E. As a guide for the application of the wood glue, mark a pencil line on the face panels, parts E, around the inner wood bed frame. After marking, remove the inner wood bed frame and apply adhesive inside the markings. Make sure that the face panel and foot rail are flush and that the face panel extends one quarter inch past the edges of the wood bed frame on both sides. If your inner wood bed frame is out of square, you can adjust it as you screw the frame to the face panels. Using number eight one and one quarter inch screws, screw the section marked X first. Keeping the end flush, screw the section marked Y. Making sure there is a quarter inch face panel overhang at the bottom, screw the section marked Z. Repeat on the other side, proceeding the same X, Y, and Z order. Drill pilot holes and screw the remaining struts to the face panel about six inches apart, taking care not to drill all the way through the face panel. You will attach two standard cabinet handle, drawer, or door pulls to the face panel. You will use these handles to pull the face panel out of the bed cabinet when you wish to lower the Murphy bed. For optimal leverage, position the handles as illustrated in your instruction booklet. Lay the cabinet verticals, parts G, on your work surface with the good outside faces down and the taped edges facing out. Start with the left vertical. Measure 7 and 3 eighths inches from the front finished edge and 6 inches down from the top edge and drill a 5 16 inch diameter hole 1 half inch deep. Be careful not to drill all the way through the vertical. Insert the bed stop pin into the hole and attach it with a number 10 3 quarter inch black screw. Refer to the construction booklet for the mounting position of the adjustable upper ball stud plate.
Starting with the left bed cabinet vertical, part G, measure from the bottom of the vertical and the front finished edge and mark a center line. The center line will be your guide for recessing the adjustable upper ball stud plate into the cabinet vertical. Next, mark the outer dimensions of the adjustable upper ball stud plate using the center line as a guide. Create a pocket one quarter inch deep by three and one half inch long for the back of the adjustable upper ball stud plate by either using a powered router and bit or manually create the pocket using a Forstner bit and chisel. Insert the adjustable upper ball stud plate into the pocket with the number one hole oriented toward the top end of the cabinet vertical. Using the two mounting holes in the plate as a guide, drill two one quarter inch diameter holes through the cabinet vertical and secure it with two T-nuts and machine screws. Refer to the booklet for the mounting position of the pivot rod and plate. Measure from the bottom of the vertical and the front finished edge of the vertical and mark. Drill a 5 8 inch diameter hole, 1 half inch deep, and insert the half inch end of the rod into the hole. 
Use a square to line up the plate and drill two pilot holes and screw two number 12 three quarter inch screws through the pilot holes into the vertical. Place a piece of scrap wood under the vertical and drill two pilot holes completely through the vertical using the upper holes in the pivot plate as a guide. Turn the vertical over. Drill two one quarter inch diameter holes completely through the vertical. Tap two T-nuts into the two upper holes from the outside, then flip the vertical back over and screw two quarter inch machine screws through the pivot plate into the T-nuts. Repeat the steps to mount the bed stop, upper ball stud plate, and male pivot plate on the right bed cabinet vertical Part G.
If you have existing base molding where you plan to install your Murphy bed, you can cut the back edges of the left and right bed verticals to allow the cabinet to fit flush against the wall. Prepare the headboard, part F, by selecting one side as the good side and applying pre-glued wood veneer tape or melamine tape to both long edges. The header, part H, consists of the header board, the front rail, the front rail support, the rear rail, and two mounting cleats. Apply wood veneer or melamine edge banding tape to all edges marked F in your instruction book. Select one side of the header board to be the good side and lay it good side up on your work surface. Drill nine one eighth inch pilot holes through the rear rail. Glue and screw the rear rail to the header board with number eight two inch screws. Drill six one eighth inch pilot holes into the front rail support. Then glue and screw or nail as you did to construct the inner wood bed frame struts. Attach the front rail to the front rail support by drilling six pilot holes one and one quarter inch deep through the rear of the support rail into the rear of the front rail. Glue and screw the pieces together with one and one quarter inch wood screws. Turn the header board over and position the assembled rail and supports three quarters of an inch in from each side of the header board. Being sure to keep the rail and the edge of the header board flush, drill five pilot holes one and one quarter inch deep through the front rail support into the header board. Glue and screw the front rail assembly to the header board with one and one quarter inch wood screws. Position the two mounting cleats between the front rail assembly and the back of the header board. Attach the mounting cleats with one and one quarter inch wood screws three quarters of an inch from the side edges of the header board.
We recommend removing all the hardware before you sand and finish the wooden components of your bed. There are an infinite number of ways to customize the look of your bed and add to its functionality. You can add decorative molding such as picture frame molding or preformed wood trim to the face panel and verticals. You can create a traditional look or a contemporary one by applying crown molding to the bed header and upper verticals and base molding. Here are some examples of beds built using the Create a Bed Murphy Bed mechanism. After you've applied your decorative trim and put a finish on the wooden components, you're ready to assemble and install your new Murphy bed using the white booklet and a few simple tools. This part of the video features the step-by-step -step instructions for assembling and installing your Murphy bed. A Murphy bed built using the adjustable create a bed Murphy bed mechanism is designed to provide years of trouble-free use when properly assembled and mounted to the wall. Watch this video from start to finish before attempting to assemble your bed. This bed contains stored mechanical energy which can cause serious injury or damage to the bed if improperly handled. Your bed must be securely anchored to the wall before attempting to open or operate the bed. This video will describe installation to wood or metal stud walls as well as masonry walls. If you have any questions about any aspect of assembling your bed, mounting it properly to the wall, or disassembling your bed, check the list of frequently asked questions at the end of this video or call our technical assistance hotline at this toll-free number. Now, let's get started. The tools you will need to assemble and install the bed are a power drill, a stud finder, a tape measure, Phillips head screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, a socket wrench with a 7 16 socket, a number 4 Allen wrench, a 1 half inch wrench, wood clamps, and drill bits appropriate for your mounting surface. After you have sanded and finished all the components of your Murphy bed, reinstall all the Murphy bed hardware except the two domed bed stops. Reattach the decorative handles or pools on the bed face panel. Attach the leg support rail, part I, between the metal tubular legs using a number four Allen wrench and the two one quarter inch by two and one half inch leg support rail screws. With the face panel lying face down, place the two one quarter inch thick mattress support pieces, parts J, inside the face panel on top of the inner wood bed frame and attach them with three quarter inch screws. Do not glue these pieces down. Screw the ends of both mattress retaining straps through the quarter inch plywood support pieces into the inner wood bed frame 16 inches from the front corners of the face panel as shown in the white assembly booklet. Carefully move the bed components and hardware to the room where the bed is to be installed. You should have the following components. The bed face panel, two verticals, the headboard, and the header. The packet of hardware should include the following. Two E-clips and two white plastic washers, two gas springs, two ball studs, and two black plastic spacers. Position the face panel face down on the carpet or other padded surface in front of the wall to which you will attach the bed. Place the ball stud plate end of the bed face panel closest to the wall. If you have not already done so, refer to page 3 of your white assembly booklet to see the recommended ball stud position number that is specific to the style of bed you are building, vertical or horizontal, and the size bed you are building, 
twin, full, or queen. Use a socket wrench or drive to move the ball stud to the correct number on the left adjustable lower ball stud plate. Make sure to move the ball stud to the same numbered position on the right adjustable lower ball stud plate. Now turn to page 4 in the white assembly booklet for instructions on preparing the adjustable upper ball stud plate. Locate the two silver ball studs and two black metal washers. Place a metal washer on the threaded side of the silver ball stud and use a half inch wrench to screw the ball stud and washer into the numbered hole that is specific to the style of bed you are building, vertical or horizontal, and the size bed you are building, twin, full, or queen. Do not use a driver to attach the ball stud as it can over torque the ball stud and fracture it. Use a half inch wrench and hand tighten the ball stud into the numbered hole as indicated on page 4. Lay the right vertical on its finished edge with the mounted hardware side facing the bed face panel. Slide a plastic washer onto the pivot bar. Slide the pivot bar into the pivot hole in the right side of the face panel until no gap remains between the side of the bed face panel and the vertical. Snap the metal E-clip into the groove at the end of the pivot bar. Repeat these steps on the left vertical. Measure up 15 inches from the bottom end of the vertical and mark. This mark will be used as a reference for placement of the headboard. Measure and mark two points, one 18 inches and one 28 inches from the ends of both verticals. Drill two pilot holes 3 eighths of an inch down through each of the verticals at the 18 inch and 28 inch marks. With a helper, screw the headboard into place using two number eight 2 inch screws. Repeat on the other end of the headboard. With the bed face panel remaining face down on the floor with the tubular legs in the closed position inside the face panel, use a helper to help you carefully lift the ends of both verticals to rotate them and the headboard into the upright position. With a helper, place the bed header on top of the bed verticals, making sure that the rear rail is closest to the wall. Working from the inside of the bed cabinet, drill three pilot holes through the mounting cleats into the bed verticals. Take care not to drill or screw all the way through the vertical. Attach the bed header to the vertical with three number eight one and one quarter inch screws. Repeat this step on the other end of the header. With the face panel still in the lowered position, check to make sure that the back of the bed cabinet is two to three feet away from the wall, allowing you enough room to work behind the bed. 
Please note that the gas springs must be mounted so that the arrow on the label points up. With the arrow on the labeled thicker end of the gas spring pointing up, snap the thinner lower end of the gas spring onto the ball stud mounted to the side of the face panel. Rest the gas spring against the headboard. Repeat on the other side with the second gas spring. With a helper firmly holding the bed cabinet, raise the bed face panel assembly up and push it up into the bed cabinet until the front edge is recessed about 3 inches. The face panel will be very heavy. At this point, the upper end of the gas spring can be snapped on. Reach inside the bed cabinet from the back and snap the upper end of the gas spring onto the upper ball stud plate mounted on the vertical. Repeat on the other side. The face panel should not have to be pulled out of the cabinet past vertical to install the gas springs. If you cannot easily snap the upper end of the gas spring onto the ball stud, your hardware may be mounted incorrectly or be in the wrong position. Check pages 3 and 4 for the correct placement of the ball studs on the adjustable upper and lower ball stud plates. After you have mounted both gas springs and while your helper is still firmly holding the bed cabinet, carefully pull the face panel 4 to 5 inches out of the bed cabinet. Working from the back of the bed, reattach the bed stops. Please note that if you want to remove a gas spring for any reason, you must follow the directions for gas spring removal found in the back of the white assembly book and demonstrated later in this video. If you don't remove the gas spring properly, you will damage it and make it unusable. If the wall has no base molding, carefully push the bed cabinet against the wall. If the wall has base molding, either remove that portion of the wall molding or make a cut at the bottom rear of the cabinet verticals to accommodate the molding and push the bed cabinet until the backs of the verticals and the headboard are flush against the wall. Check to make sure the top and bottom of the bed cabinet are firmly against the wall. Insert a piece of cardboard into the gap between the face panel and each vertical. Do not attempt to operate your Murphy bed until it is securely anchored to the wall. Failure to do so could result in serious injury and or damage to the bed. Your Murphy bed must be properly anchored to the wall using the appropriate fasteners. Which fasteners you use will depend on whether your wall is of wood stud, metal stud, or masonry construction. If you are not confident that you can properly and securely anchor your bed to the wall, get a professional to install your bed for you using these instructions. 3-inch coarse thread drywall screws are used to anchor the bed cabinet to a wall with wood studs. We recommend using a good stud finder which can be purchased at any hardware store or home improvement center. This will help you locate the center of the stud, providing the most secure anchor. Find the studs in your wall and mark them. You may need to move your Murphy bed a few inches to the left or right once you have located the centers of the studs. Most walls are constructed with studs 16 inches apart. You must anchor the bed cabinet with three screws for a twin or full-size bed and four screws for a queen-size bed. Depending on the size of your bed, drill three or four pilot holes through the rear rail of the bed header into the studs and drive three or four three-inch coarse thread drywall screws through the wall into the studs. Masonry screws are used to anchor the bed cabinet to walls of concrete, mortar, or brick construction. You must anchor the bed cabinet with three screws for a twin or full-size bed and four screws for a queen-size bed. Drill three or four pilot holes through the back rail of the bed header. Using a 5 32nd 4-inch concrete drill bit, 
drill through the pilot holes into the wall two inches deep. Anchor the bed by screwing three or four three sixteenths by two and one quarter inch masonry screws through the rear rail into the wall. Three sixteenths by four inch toggle bolts are used to anchor the bed cabinet to a wall with metal studs. We recommend using a good stud finder which can be purchased at any hardware store or home improvement center. This will help you locate the center of the stud, providing the most secure anchor. Find the studs in your wall and mark them. You may need to move your Murphy bed a few inches to the left or right after you have located the centers of the studs. Most walls are constructed with studs 16 inches apart. Drill three or four pilot holes through the rear rail of the cabinet header into the wall. Pull the bed away from the wall. Using a 9 16 inch drill bit, drill holes at the pilot holes through the metal studs. Be sure you drill through the studs. Insert the toggle bolt screws through the rear rail of the header. Now thread the toggle wings onto the screws. Fold the wings back completely and push it through the metal stud until the wings spring open. Pull the header rail back to hold the wings against the inside of the stud and tighten with a screwdriver. You must anchor the bed cabinet with three toggle bolts for a twin or full size bed and four toggle bolts for a queen size bed. After the bed is firmly and securely anchored to the wall, lower the face panel. Rotate the tubular legs into the down position. Please note that the empty face panel will not stay down without a mattress. With a helper holding the face panel in the down position, place the mattress inside the face panel and secure it with the elastic retaining straps. Don't be concerned if it seems difficult to lower the empty face panel out of the cabinet. Once the mattress is in place, the bed will stay down and function easily. The recommended settings for the adjustable lower ball stud plate on page 3 are intended for maximum lifting power for the size and style bed you are assembling. If after you have placed the mattress inside the face panel, the face panel floats off the floor, use a driver or socket wrench with a 7 16 hex socket to turn the hex nut clockwise to a lower number on both adjustable lower ball stud plates to reduce the lifting power of the gas springs. Be sure to adjust both sides equally. Remember, small adjustments create big differences in your bed's lifting power. Close the bed. If the gap around the face panel is uneven, tap firmly at the bottom of the end panel on the side with the smallest gap until the desired gap is obtained. If you plan to add decorative base molding to your bed, position it across the lower front of the bed cabinet and attach it only to the front and bottom edges of the verticals. Your Murphy bed can be easily disassembled and moved if necessary by following these steps. Do not attempt to take your bed apart without following these steps or you could damage your bed. If your bed has base molding, remove it first. Lower the bed face panel. Pull the mattress toward the foot of the bed, allowing easy access to the adjustable lower ball stud plates. 
Use a driver or wrench with a 7 16th socket to return the lower ball studs to the original positions on the adjustable lower ball stud plates indicated on page 3 of the white assembly booklet for the style and size bed you are disassembling. With a helper holding the face panel down, remove the mattress. Rotate the leg assembly upward into the face panel and raise the face panel back up into the bed cabinet. Remove the anchor screws from the top of the bed cabinet. Do not remove the anchor screws with the face panel in the open or lowered position. Pull the bed cabinet two to three feet away from the wall, allowing enough room to work comfortably behind it. With a helper securely holding the bed cabinet, carefully remove the two bed stops. The gas springs can now be removed one at a time. Use a flat blade screwdriver to gently pry up the spring clip located around the plastic head of the upper end of the gas spring. Now pull the end of the gas spring off the upper ball stud. Remember, the spring clip is just lifted, not removed completely. Repeat on the other gas spring. With a helper holding the outer cabinet assembly, carefully lower the face panel to the floor. Unscrew and remove the header. With a helper, lower the vertical and headboard assembly to the floor. Unscrew and remove the headboard. Use a flat blade screwdriver to gently pry up the spring clip located around the plastic head of the lower ends of both gas springs. Now pull the ends of the gas springs off the ball studs. Use the flat blade screwdriver to remove the E-clips. Remove the verticals from the face panel. Here are some of the more frequently asked questions we get from our customers. Isn't solid hardwood better than plywood for the construction of my bed? Furniture grade veneered plywood is recommended over solid hardwood for the construction of your bed for several reasons. It is more dimensionally stable and is best suited to withstand the physical stresses of the mechanical operation of the bed. You must use plywood for the side rails, parts B, or you will void the warranty on this mechanism and risk catastrophic damage to the bed. I added a flat screen TV to the front of my bed. Now the face panel is hard to lift. Why? A Murphy bed built using the Create a Bed Murphy bed mechanism has been engineered to raise and lower easily. When you deviate from the recommended construction materials, the measurements, the hardware placement, or in this case, when you add significant weight to the face panel, you affect the ability of the bed to function easily. It's really just basic physics. The more weight you add to something, the harder it becomes to lift. The measurements and recommended materials in your construction booklet are the results of years of research and development. Do not deviate from the printed plans before calling technical assistance at this number. What kind of mattress do I use with my bed? The recommended size and weight of the mattress for the style and size bed you are assembling can be found at the bottom of page 6 of the cream-colored construction booklet. I can't compress the gas spring. Is it frozen up? Each gas spring contains a significant amount of pressure in order to raise and lower your face panel and mattress easily and cannot be compressed by hand. 
Do not attempt to compress a gas spring in any way except as described in this video and in the instruction booklet. You can damage the gas spring. The bed is very hard to open and will not stay down. The gas spring lift mechanism contains enough power to raise and lower the face panel and a quality mattress easily. The face panel will not stay down without the mattress. If the face panel stays down without the mattress, your face panel is too heavy or your mechanism mounting positions are not correct. If the face panel floats off the floor after you've put a mattress inside it, refer to page 11 of the white assembly booklet to adjust the position of the lower ball studs on both the left and right adjustable lower ball stud plates. I pushed my face panel back into the bed cabinet, but the gas spring is still too long or too short to snap on the upper ball stud plate. If you cannot easily snap the upper end of the gas spring on the ball stud, or if the face panel has to be pulled out of the cabinet past vertical to install the gas springs, one or more of your ball studs are mounted in the wrong place. Refer to pages 3 and 4 in your white assembly booklet for the correct ball stud mounting positions for the style and size bed you are assembling. Why does the face panel of my bed sag out of the cabinet? If your face panel sags out of the cabinet when you try to close it, do not try to push or force it back into the cabinet. A sagging face panel means that the mounting position of one or more of the upper or lower ball studs is incorrect. Refer to pages 3 and 4 in your white assembly booklet for the correct ball stud mounting positions for the style and size bed you are assembling. If you try to force the face panel back into the bed cabinet, you will damage the gas springs and the ball stud plates. Thank you for purchasing a Create a Bed Murphy Bed Mechanism. If you have any questions, please call us toll free or visit our website.